The first video game is believed to be one created by a nuclear physicist in 1958 using analog circuitry and an oscilloscope display. The first generation of commercial video games for the home came out in the early 1970s with consoles like the Magnavox Odyssey. These games didn't use microprocessors but were hard-coded using circuitry that used discrete digital logic circuits. The very first games using television displays were primitive, didn't include sound, and the players had to keep score manually. In 1976, General Instrument produced a series of integrated circuits that implemented most of the circuitry for a video game on a single chip. At least 200 companies offered video game consoles with similar features based on these chips. The first and most popular chip was the AY38500, which supported four different games with some options to adjust the difficulty level. The AY38500 chip implements a video game console with the following features. You can select one of four games. Most are two-player games where each player uses a control to move their paddle vertically to hit a moving ball on the screen. Tennis is a two-player game where each player has a paddle that moves up and down and you score a point when your opponent fails to return the ball. Soccer, called hockey on some consoles, is similar but the goal area is smaller and each side controls two players, a goaltender and a forward. Squash, called handball on some consoles, is a two-player game where the ball bounces against a wall and players must alternately return it. Practice is a one-player version of squash. Scores are shown on screen and the game ends when one player reaches 15 points. The game supports simple sound effects when a ball is hit or a point is scored. To adjust the level of difficulty, you can select the ball angle, whether or not the ball moves at a greater angle and correspondingly faster when it hits the edges of the paddle. You can also set the speed to a slow or fast setting. And adjust the paddle size to be small or large. By combining the three settings you can get a range of difficulty levels. You can also adjust the serve mode. In manual mode you must press the serve button to start play. In auto mode it automatically serves the ball shortly after a point is scored. On some console designs only auto serve mode was supported. Finally a reset button resets the game score to zero either when a game ends or when desired during gameplay. Two additional rifle games were supported which used an optical gun that the user would use to fire at the screen. This required additional circuitry and not many commercial consoles supported this option. The AY38500-1 version of the chip supported NTSC video format used mostly in North America and Japan and the AY38500 supported PAL, the standard in most European countries. The chip requires 6 to 7 volts to operate. The circuit design in the AY38500 datasheet shows how to implement a game console using the chip, two additional CMOS ICs, a crystal and some resistors, capacitors and switches. Sound is supported by a small one transistor amplifier circuit which drives an onboard loudspeaker. Typically an RF modulator was added to support output to a standard television. TVs of the time didn't typically have direct audio or video inputs. Output is black and white. An additional chip, the AY38515, could be used to generate color output. The data sheet also shows how, with additional circuitry, you could add support for random ball speed and angles, a gray background, and even a four-player configuration. 
While no longer being manufactured, I was able to find a new old stock source for the AY38500-1 chip, and all other parts are still available, so I decided to try building a game. I used the reference design in the datasheet with a few changes. Output is composite video rather than RF, as most TVs and monitors today have video inputs. Similarly, I omitted the sound amplifier and speaker, and instead output line-level audio to an RCA jack to go to the TV or monitor. I used an LM317 regulator to produce approximately 7 volts. The game can run from any source of 8 to 15 volts DC, including a 9-volt battery. A power LED is also included. I prototyped the circuit on a breadboard and confirmed that it worked. I was a little suspicious up to that point that the chips ordered from China might possibly be fakes, but they worked fine, and I'd ordered a few. I then designed a little printed circuit board. Features include a dip switch to select the game and game options, push buttons for reset and manual serve, RCA jacks for audio and video output, and connectors for power and paddles. The paddles are external 1 mega ohm potentiometers connected by a shielded cable. Everything else is on board and just connections to a 9 volt battery and composite monitor are needed. I also added a header with the signals needed so that the PCB could be built into a case with external switches and buttons wired in the case. I didn't include the rifle circuit but in case I wanted to add it in future I provided header pin connections to the signals needed. For the paddles I mounted the pots in some plastic cases that came with hardware from a dollar store wired via some shielded cable. I could make something more professional if desired like these paddles I made for my Apple IIc which are in nicer commercial cases. I had enough parts to make three units. I also mounted one in a case. I used a plastic bento box from the dollar store with toggle switches, push buttons, RCA jacks and a rotary game select switch. A 9 volt battery mounts inside. The files for my design, including schematic and PCB layout, are freely available under an open hardware license from my GitHub account listed in the video description. I didn't include the rifle circuit, but I may try building one up in the future. The one more difficult to find part I will need is a phototransistor. My father bought a Radio Shack TV scoreboard around 1976, which was one of the many products built around the same general instrument chip. I remember my family had hours of fun with this first video game, and we even modified it to add controllers with longer cables. It was nostalgic to learn about how these first generation games were implemented and to build one myself from scratch.